Hello, I'm Vimla Nair, and this is a course on phosphorus in Florida watersheds, science, and applications. There are six modules to this course. In the first module, it's welcome, course overview, and conventional techniques for evaluating phosphorus release from soils. This is lecture one of module one. In this lecture, I'll provide you with an overview of the course. The course setup is as follows. The course will consist of six modules. Each module will have five approximately 15 minute lectures. There will be learning objectives associated with each module. The learning objectives are normally included in the lecture one of a given module, but in this particular module, that is module one, the learning objectives will be in lecture two. References related to the lecture topic will be provided at the end of each lecture. The course objectives are as follows. To provide summary of phosphorus forms and how they interact with Florida soil components, provide participants with an understanding of basic techniques, both conventional and new, used for evaluating phosphorus dynamics in agricultural soils, apply the conventional and recently developed techniques for understanding peer retention and loss from soils that would impact the quality of water leaving a farm or a watershed, and finally provide examples of using the newer techniques for understanding and solving real world problems. The instructors. I am one of the instructors, Vimla Nair, an environmental soil chemist, and I'll be taking modules one, three, four, five, and six. Dr. Willie Harris is soil mineralogy and genesis specialist. He'll be looking into the lectures in Module 2. We belong to UFIFS Soil and Water Sciences Department. Module 1 involves the welcome, course overview, and conventional techniques for evaluating phosphorus release from soils. Lecture 1, which is actually this lecture, is the welcome and course overview. Lecture two is sampling soils for P risk assessment. Lecture three, conventional techniques for evaluating P release from soils, water soluble P and soil test P. Lecture four, oxalate extractable P, iron oxide extractable P and turtle P. And finally, in lecture five, we'll discuss soil P fractionation procedures. In module two, we'll look into how Florida soils interact with phosphorus. The first lecture is an overview of Florida soils and their distribution. Lecture two is, a, is on P dynamics as related to soil morphology and composition. Lecture three is a continuation of the same topic as in lecture two, P dynamics as related to soil morphology and composition. Lecture four is on soil and hydrologic factors affecting phosphorus transport. And lecture five, risk assessment implications of manure amended, fertilizer amended, and naturally phosphatic soils. In module three, we'll be discussing the use of conventional techniques for evaluating P in soils. The first lecture deals with isotherm determination. Lecture two, the application of fractionation and isotherm parameters. Lecture three, P retention and release from biochar. Lecture four, the Florida P index. Lecture five, the quick P field test. Module four 
recent developments and techniques for evaluating peer release from soils. Lecture 1 deals with the degree of pea saturation and the pea saturation ratio, both the theory and calculations. Lecture 2, we pick out some examples from literature on the degree of pea saturation and the pea saturation ratio. Lecture 3 deals with the pea saturation ratio and isotherm parameters. Lecture 4, soil phosphorus storage capacity or the SPSC. And Lecture 5, relating recently developed techniques such as the PSR and SPSC to already existing data. Module 5, we look into the phosphorus application and water quality. The first of the lecture deals with long-term contribution of phosphorus from agricultural lands, that is the legacy P. Lecture 2 is on inorganic versus organic P sources. Lecture 3, the reduction of soil phosphorus loss through amendment additions. Lecture 4, natural and anthropogenic P sources. And Lecture 5, risk assessment of wetland soils. In Module 6, we look into some more applications of the PSR and SBSC concepts. Lecture 1 deals with the environment and agronomic applications. Lecture 2, site-specific prediction of P loss risk. Lecture 3, phosphorus storage and release in treeless and tree-based agricultural systems. Lecture 4, relationship of PSR and SBSC to edge of field and groundwater quality. Lecture 5 will be an overview of the PSR and SPSC concepts. And this brings us to an end of the lectures within this particular course. Sometimes you will note that whenever it is possible, we will relate the topic to previous or forthcoming lectures so that for those who are interested in gaining more information, they can go back and check on the earlier lectures and look into the continuation of upcoming lectures too. This work would not be possible without the support in part by the Florida Department of Agricultural and Consumer Services. Thanks are due to Barbara Larson, Educational Media Coordinator, Soil and Water Science Department, for her assistance with setting up video recording and for uploading the videos onto the website. Photographs of instruments were taken at laboratories within the Soil and Water Science Department at the University of Florida. Thanks are due to Tyler Jones, UFIFS Photography, for assistance with taking some of the photographs, and to Deplana Chakravarti and Bishwanath Dari, former graduate research assistants, for help with the other photos. Thank you.